Hi, Pastor Tommy McMurtry back again with another video debunking dispensationalism. Now, one thing I want to cover in this video is the issue of multiple Gospels. Now, while many dispensationalists do not believe in multiple Gospels, this is a foundational teaching of dispensationalism. In fact, if you look in Clarence Larkin's book, Dispensational Truth, you will see that he teaches multiple Gospels. He has four in there, and he's not referring to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He teaches four different Gospels, while most dispensationalists today teach three. Either way, if you have any more than one, you are dead wrong. That is a very wicked teaching, and the it, teaching of multiple Gospels, it is one of the most disgusting teachings in dispensationalism. And what I want to do, I want to debunk the whole idea of multiple Gospels, but at the same time, at the end of this, I want to show why dispensationalists must teach multiple Gospels. And so Galatians 1, 6, this is a verse we always go to, says, And I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another Gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the Gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other Gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed, and as we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you that ye have received, let him be accursed. So right there, it's very clear, there is not another gospel. There are only perverters of the gospel, and dispensationalists, they pervert the very gospel of God, and that is why is such a dangerous teaching. This is why I will not have anything to do with anyone who teaches multiple Gospels. I will do like the Bible says, and I will let them be accursed. As far as I'm concerned, they're on their way to hell, and I'm not going to do anything to stop it. I believe that's what Paul is teaching us here. But this, this is a very dangerous teaching, and so what the multiple Gospel crowd likes to do is they like to, you know, bring, you know, they, they start throwing all these things at you, like, show me in the Old Testament where they were saved by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Show me something in the Old Testament that says death, burial, and resurrection. Well, once again, they just deny clear scripture in the New Testament. And one of their go-to passages that they used, you know, they'll, they'll beat in your head, the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And they always go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And let's go there. It says in verse 1, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. The dispensationalists teach that the Apostle Paul, he is the one that introduced the gospel of the grace of God. They teach that Peter teached a different gospel than Paul, or that Paul teached a different gospel than Jesus Christ, which is beyond wicked, that teaching. But look at verse 3. It says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Say, there it is. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Show me that in the Old Testament. Well, the thing is, Paul just said in there that he died according to the scriptures. He was buried and rose again, according to the scriptures. He's saying the death, burial, and resurrection was done according to the scriptures, a reference to the Old Testament. So how could you say the death, burial, and resurrection is not in the Old Testament when Paul said this gospel that you're saved by is something that is according to the scriptures? So Luke 24, 25, Jesus, while he, after his resurrection, he said, uh, while he's on the road to Emmaus, says in verse 25, Then he said to them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. They had heard that Jesus had risen from the dead, but they didn't believe it. And Jesus said they were fools for not believing all that the prophets had spoken, referring specifically to the resurrection of Christ. He said in verse 26, Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets... He expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So right there, Jesus used Moses and all the prophets, showing the things about himself, specifically about his death, burial, and resurrection. Acts 10.43 says, To him give all the prophets witness, that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. He, they're saying right here that this was taught in the Old Testament. 
that whoever would believe on him would receive remission of sins. Yet these same people will teach a salvation that was a faith plus works in the Old Testament, when according to the New Testament, the Old Testament teaches a whosoever believeth, just like we teach in the New Testament today. So what then they like to do is they'll say, well, you show me that Old Testament verse that you know, says death, burial, and resurrection that mentions the name of Jesus, and they have to start getting more and more specific. And so the truth is, there are many references. We don't even have time to go into all of them, but just a few uh, more well-known ones. Psalm 1610 says, For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. In the book of Acts, chapter two, in chapter 2, it explains very clearly that David wasn't talking about himself, that this was a reference to Jesus Christ, that his soul would not be left in hell. And it says that neither his holy one would see corruption, meaning he wasn't going to rot in that grave. He was going to resurrect. Isaiah 53, verse 7 says, He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened out his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his she her shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. Who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken, clearly talking about the death of Christ. And he made his grave with the wicked, talking about the burial. Um, and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. There we have his soul in hell once again. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Right there is the resurrection. Right there is the gospel in Isaiah, and you can try all you want to say that's not the gospel and people can't get saved by that right there. But in the New Testament, we see the story of the Ethiopian eunuch when Philip is preaching to him in Acts chapter 8, verse 30. It says, And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest what thou readest. And he said, how can I except some man should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. The place of the scripture which he read was this. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before his shear, is done before his shear, so opened he not his mouth. In his humiliation his judgment was taken away. And who shall declare his generation? For his life is taken from the earth. And the eunuch answered Philip and said, I pray thee of whom speaketh the prophet this, of himself or some other man, and Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. Right there we see Philip preached the death, burial, and resurrection from the Old Testament. He preached Jesus from the book of Isaiah. And so, you know, Paul said you can get saved by believing the Old Testament. In 2 Timothy 3.15, says, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, talking to Timothy, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. This was before the New Testament was written. Paul's telling Timothy, you're able to be wise unto salvation because you, from a child, known the holy scriptures. He was talking about the Old Testament and said that would make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. And then he says in verse 16, because all scripture is given by inspiration of God. So if the Old Testament taught a faith plus works, and in today's dispensation it's just grace without works, then how in the world would Timothy have read the Old Testament and come up with a faith without works in Jesus Christ? It's because he was able to do that because it teaches that in the Old Testament. And the truth is, the people who do not believe this, the people who teach multiple gospels, they, I mean, they, they have to pervert the scriptures greatly. For example, John 14, 6, technically in the Old Testament dispensation, Jesus saith unto him, talking to Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Looks like he's teaching to Jesus only salvation in the Old Testament dispensation. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Right there, that was still Old Testament dispensation, talking to a Jew, according to these people. And in verse 3, he said, Verily I say unto thee, except a man be born again, 
he cannot see the kingdom of God. Do we still not teach that a person must be born again in order to be saved? That was not something that was temporary. Even Peter preached about being born again. 1 Peter 1.23 said, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Looks like Peter was preaching the same gospel as Jesus Christ. So what about the supposed contradictions of the gospel in the New Testament and Old Testament? Well, here's the thing. First off, there are none. There are no contradictions. See, additional information does not mean another gospel. For example, my wife is pregnant right now. She's with child. Several months ago, we received that information. We found out that she was pregnant. We received that dispensation. A few months later, we received another dispensation and more information that the baby was a girl. We now know more about that baby than we did before. That new information doesn't make a new baby. It's still the same one. And after the baby is born, we will receive another dispensation. Still the same baby. And over time, we will learn more and more about that child as far as their personality, their looks, their eye color, their hair color, all those things. But the truth is, 20 years later, that same person will be the same one that is in the womb today. And while God revealed more of his plan over time about the gospel, it doesn't mean it was different gospels. It was always the same gospel. And the truth is, we shouldn't be too quick to assume that they didn't know much about the gospel in the Old Testament. Because, for example, it says in Galatians 3, 6, it says, Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted unto him, for righteousness, know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. We see that God preached the gospel to Abraham. He had done this in the past. And so just because a scripture in the Old Testament is not as clear as a scripture in the New Testament, it does not mean they did not have a very clear understanding of it in the Old Testament because we see God preach the gospel to Abraham. And we also see in Hebrews 11, in verse 17, it says, By faith Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Now, how did Abraham know that God would do that when nobody had been raised from the dead at that time? That miracle had never happened. Here's how come Abraham knew that God could do that, because the gospel had been preached to Abraham. He had received Isaac in a like figure of what was to come, so he obviously understood that he could be raised up from the dead because he knew about God sending his only begotten son that he would raise from the dead one day. He had received Isaac in a like figure, and it's very clear that Abraham understood that. So we can't just assume they didn't know anything about this stuff in the Old Testament. It's very clear they knew some things. It's just the scriptures that we have are not as clear as the ones in the New Testament. But I do believe many understood those things. So why do they teach this wicked heresy of multiple gospels? Because Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, it says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Why do they do that? Because it's necessary to help separate Israel from the believers. It's one more thing that they need to do to make the tribulation about Israel. But here's the thing that they forget to look at in Matthew, just a few chapters before, in verse 21. Everybody wants to say the Jews are going to want, be the ones teaching the, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, that that is a Jewish thing. But Matthew 21, verse 42, Jesus saith unto them, talking to the Jews, did ye ever read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. 
Israel was shutting up the kingdom of God, or kingdom of heaven against men. Israel was not doing what they were supposed to do, and so God took it from a physical nation, and he gave it to a spiritual nation, and that is the thing that they don't want you to see. That is the thing that they need to avoid. And you say, well, those you know, things, you know, Israel, timing of the rapture is not a big deal. Well, the truth is, some people are so desperate to protect that false doctrine, they are willing to pervert the gospel to do it. And that is what is going on today, and it is time that we reject this type of teaching. We should reject anyone who would teach another gospel, whether that be Clarence Larkin, C.I. Schofield, or any Ruckmanite of today. Those people should be marked and avoided. Let them be accursed. Thank you so much. I hope this was a help.